This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. Part three of this chapter: Income from Investments, Savings, and Dividends. So, savings income, as it mentions there, is interest income received gross now, always in gross, without any deduction of tax at source. Okay, it will come from either a bank or a building society. Now, a building society, it mentions there is a financial institution that lends money for the purchase of properties. Um, you might also find government securities and corporate bonds, but be careful. Those exempt incomes that we mentioned earlier, make sure you include them and say that they are exempt or don't put them in the computation, put them at the bottom and say that these are exempt so you've not included them. Now, it's what you receive in the tax year. Tax year starts 6th of April 23, and it ends, if you remember rightly, on the 5th of April 24. And it's what you actually receive between those two dates. So be careful with the dates when you get them in the question. They may just throw one in um, that is in um, a different date. Um, so just be careful of that. Now, dividend income is um, income that you receive when you have invested money into a company and received shares. So you invest the money, they give you a share certificate, and every so often the company will then issue a dividend as a reward, a certain percentage of the value that you hold. And that dividend income, again, is received gross without any deduction of tax and it is what you receive in that tax year between those two dates. So taxable income received from banks and building society. We notice in the computation that it's included in the savings income column. Um, you're unlikely to get personal allowances coming this far if they've got a salary. Um, but if there is some spare personal allowance, then that can be deducted from that income that you have received. Again, in the order in which non-savings, savings, dividend, very important. Um, the rates of tax. Now, I've taken these from the tax tables. Okay, never guess. Always check. Um, so, the first £37,700 of any taxable income will be taxed at what's known as basic rate tax, 20%. Anything over that, up to £125,140, will be taxed at 40%. That's called high rate tax. That's high rate. And anything over that amount is called additional rate tax, and that's taxed at 45%. So, your savings income will be taxed first, sorry, your non-savings income will be taxed first at those rates. So that's your first. First, non-savings income is taxed at those rates. Now, second, savings income. There is a special 0% rate for savings income. So basic rate taxpayers, the savings income nil rate band, savings income nil rate band for this year is a thousand pounds. If you are a high rate taxpayer and you would normally be paying tax at 40%, then you only get 500. Additional rate taxpayers do not get that zero rate, um, do not get the savings income nil rate band. We are going to do lots of questions on this, It'll be easier once you see the, um, the questions. Savings income in excess of that savings income nil rate band is taxed at the basic rate of 20%. If it's below that limit of 37,700, then at 40%, if it falls in the next gap, and then if you if your income is over 125,140, then you'll pay tax on that savings income at 45%. Okay, so let's have a look at Example number one. 
Billy, in example number one, has a trading profit of 27,500, which is pen, non-savings income. And bank deposit interest, savings income, of £10,000 in 23-24. We are to calculate Billy's income tax liability for 23-24. So I'm going to show you how that works now. First thing you need to do is to give it a heading. So Billy, income tax, computation, 2324. Always important to do that. Then you set up the pro forma. So we have non savings income. Savings. Dividends. Now we haven't got any dividends in this case, so we'll ignore that. And a total column. So what we then do is you copy the question into the answer. So the question clearly said that he had trading income of 27,500. Okay, let's just check that is exactly what he has. Yep, and then bank deposit interest of 10,000 pounds. Bank interest, 10, oops, wrong column. Silly me. Let's get rid of that. Okay. When you've done that, it's important that you then subtotal I think it's ten thousand hundred, ten thousand thirty-seven thousand five hundred. Okay, so that is the total income. Or Billy. Now we then deduct from that his personal allowance. And we check in the rates and see that that is £12,750. And we use it against the non savings income first. It's obviously used up in total. We then, this is now the taxable income. You notice the labels have changed. So his taxable income. Do you know what? I put that the wrong way around. Please forgive me. Guess what I didn't do? I didn't check. Okay. That shows you something, okay? That shows you, always check. Okay, shall we try again? 930, okay, and 10,000, 24,930. Now I've double underlined it because that's the end of this computation. We have done his income tax computation. We have worked out what his taxable income is, which we now, so that was part one. Now we know what that is. We can now move on to the income tax computation. And again, you head it. So Billy, IT computation, tax calculation. Clearly show the examiner exactly what you're doing, what your thought process at all. So we do non-savings first. Always do non-savings first. And the column says £14,930. That is taxed at 20%, which is £2,986. Okay. Then we do the savings now, by clearly labelling like that, non-saving savings, you're showing the examiner that you understand the rule. The rule is you do non-savings, then you do savings, and then you do dividends. So that's important that you do that. 
Okay. So this individual is a basic rate taxpayer. Therefore, the first thousand is at zero percent. Put that in there. You've noticed no pennies on the end. No pennies. Round up, round down. The examiner marker is quite happy with you rounding up, rounding down. The next 9,000, because in total it comes to 10, if you remember, they're still at basic rate, so now that's taxed at basic rate, which is £1,800. Now, I always make sure that I add this column up, that it comes to that figure, comes to that figure. That's just kind of a safety net thing to make sure that you... You've, you've got the correct figure, you haven't missed anything out. Add up the tax and hey presto, we have an answer. So let's have a look at example number two. <coughs> 